A great way to start things off tonight to rival factions, to sets of players that will be tremendously well supported this evening. John Joe Sharkey kicks us off in the final group stage of the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup 2024. Next week, it is the final four, two semi-finals and the big one at the end of it. Pairs Cup is really in the home straight now and it's do or die for these four players. Terrific break from John Joe Sharkey to kick us off this evening and that will give these two first poke at this table. We're playing international eight ball rules, pick your colour set, pot your balls, pot the eight ball, win the frame. Four of those will win you the match. If we are going down to the clock, of which there's 20 minutes per match. If it goes down to zero, we'll take the result and it is right there. And we never know what can happen. We've seen some pretty mad things happen in the uh, in the last few weeks. There really has been some <coughs> quite bonkers things going on. So just keep an eye on that match clock. It has very much had a say in the impact of the final four of the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup for this year. Interesting first layout here for Ian and John Joe. The, the eight ball is obviously the big problem and, and was the big problem throughout. Now, the question I've got here is, does it go top <coughs> left and is it a big pocket? Does it slide past the red? In which case, they've gone about this quite nicely. Although, just left a little bit more angle there than was wanted and they're nowhere. So we won't find out about that eight ball in this visit, I don't believe. Looks like a poor shot from John Joe, but I'm a little bit surprised with the shot that Ian played. If if the plan was to, to get underneath the eight ball last, it didn't need to leave that much angle on the yellow to left centre. You'd rather just have it so you can drop it in. Both yellows go bottom right and get underneath the eight. You know, you're looking for the showpiece recovery shot. Not to be. This is the precursor. Yes, I think he's just got into it more. I don't think he was ever planning to get there, watching it on replay. He's just trying to get it on and off the cushion and well, got what, half a tip too low. And it, it, that sounds like a major error, but on this cloth, on this table, that's so easy to do. So first glimpse at the table in the <coughs> last eight, as we are essentially now in, of Liam Highfield and Jimmy Croxton. Liam Highfield, a former snooker professional, fell off the tour Earlier on this year, super, super talent with a cue in his hands and is very, very familiar to this neck of the woods as well. This is his local club. He's not afraid of playing some league matches every now and then, as you might have heard as well, for the, for the local teams based out of here. Very popular figure in this part of the world. Yeah, good friends with, with Jimmy as well, which is obviously, I think, an important aspect you, you want to be able to be comfortable out there with your partner with whatever happens yeah and I think maybe even more so than that this is this is not a, a snooker player who's got zero respect for the for the game of eight ball this is a guy who's, who's a lot of his good friends all play this game and play it to a high level and he has plenty of respect for for what they do it's a completely different game snooker players can't just come into pull and dominate by virtue of playing on a bigger table it's just not how it works and we're going to see our first foul of the night it's going to be cue ball in hand for Liam and Jimmy they can afford a little as we see uh, DJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton waiting to uh, take to the stage in match number two it's my cousins and Shane Thompson first up for those boys but they can afford a little bit here, Liam and, and Jimmy, to play with their food a little. They almost have to with this layout. There's still a problem. I mean, obviously, they're massive favourites to win the frame, but they've got big problems with the two reds on the right-hand side. The one thing, you know, they came through, I'd say, fairly comfortably when they, you know, they came through their original group. Just a little bit of work in the final match, which they got done. Jimmy nearly uh, ran around the table and created a little bit of a scare. But other than that, they were pretty good value on the night. But, I was quite critical when they played that there wasn't a huge amount of communication between the two because you know, Jimmy's a professional ball player and you know, obviously Liam's a, a professional snooker player and you want Jimmy to take the lead a little bit on some of the decision making whether it's a scotch frame or whether it's you know helping him out in an individual frame and he kind of left Liam to it quite a lot and even in the scotch frame so it's, it's good tonight to see that there is a lot more communication between the two of them early here. 
Well, I think there sort of has to be in this frame. Well, maybe it's the frame that's doing the, you know, leading the way there. You're right. Now, is Jimmy going for an aggressive option here? No. No attempt to pot that, I don't think, because there was no real advantage in doing so. And <coughs> ultimately, even if John, Joe and Ian make the yellow that's in the open, which they might be capable of doing, it's incredibly then difficult to go and make the yellow and the eight ball to follow it. Anything you'd say there for Jimmy and Liam is that that didn't progress their chances at all. It was a containing shot, a bit of a nothing shot. You know, you've got to be trying to develop these reds while playing safe or, you know, trying to do something you can't just wait because eventually it might leave a, a shot too many for John Joe or Ian. I think with this frame how it is, you almost have to imagine what's what's the dream scenario, what's my plan for breaking those two reds out with cue ball in hand, without cue ball in hand. Then you've got to figure out a way to get there. Because Ian and John Joe will be pretty happy here to keep the scoreline nil-nil for a good chunk of this game and just hope against hope that something goes their way. They know they're massively up against it. That was super aggressive was playing the big, well. po big pocket double to top left and, and just <laughs> straightened it up way too much I'll cancel everything I just yep. said because they completely went against the grain and decided to you know b bin off patience and just go for it and maybe that's what, what Jimmy and, and Liam were looking for was that just let's just keep dangling the carrot try and make him do something massive and make it happen and once it doesn't then we mop up that's essentially what's happened here I'm sure that Jimmy's played the best shot he's ever played in his life there. If he was playing on the one on the right-hand side, which would have been the preference, he's not played it very well. And nor's Liam. Yeah, these two can, can pot a good ball, but they're asking a little bit of themselves here. To me, the key there for Jimmy was get on the one on the right-hand side first shot, use the one at the top of the table to get connect to either of the two in the middle, and you've won the frame. Eight ball goes right centre, so you want the one bottom right last ball, and you're away. Now they're having to sort of back their queuing to, to get there. They are still massive favourites for that, but <laughs> it's still it's that one on the top right still feels a problem. Yeah, and these pockets do play much tighter than they have done in recent months and indeed years. Indeed, I think I'm right in saying that they played on a different table the last time these two were here. So Liam Highfield's first experience of the Ras and Apollo, when he... It's a lovely shot. And when he arrived at the club earlier on this afternoon, Jimmy wrangled in immediately for a pep talk in the arena and gave him the sort of lowdown and said, they play much tighter, watch that. Middles are quite nice and sort of started to running through the the sort of things that a player of these two's level would really notice. It's interesting. It is. Okay, so because they didn't quite get this right early on, it means he's got to really kill this one in. I think it's a little bit easier than I, th I think, yeah. He could just drop it in dead weight. Thought there might have been a touch too much angle there, but it was fine. goes the eight ball. So a 1-0 lead then for Croxton and Highfields. We still have time, but it's got to start soon. And it's going to be dry. That uh, red just sitting over the top right-hand corner makes this interesting. Yellows are going to be a challenge for one reason and one reason only, and that is getting on the yellow at the bottom of the table. Now the yellow doesn't go at the top of the table. Reds have the two big problems top left, so what does Jimmy do? A tune it up. I think I could make the the case to take your colour set and play safe. I think I was when I was saying that, I was thinking more to take red down the table. Which I think was okay. Leaving that red over the top left is a little bit of a safety net then getting to work on a safety game at 2 nil up with under five to play but Jimmy more often than not will always choose aggression that was close that was going to be reviewed as well just a 
double check it was played in time. Got a feel was it was okay in real time, but got that wrong before. Yeah, so match clock has stopped at four minutes and 20 seconds. And referee Orich Tesco is just heading into the booth to take a look at this last shot with a little bit of audio magic to make sure that this was played on time. It does ma massive implications, whichever call he makes. Wanting to bring in the cricket terms for you, Stephen, as always. The, <laughs> the soft signal from Orich was that it was OK. I think that's where we're going to end up. Yeah, you can understand why he uh, using that term. went upstairs, though. <laughs> yeah, true. going to have to play more like most likely the two at the top back to back so the angle on the first one's all important just to be able to screw out or screw round off the cushion for the other one I think the natural's okay here it might be just turning a touch too far left let's have a look so much so he's played into it yeah, that's not the best of shots the one that really hurt him, actually, was the one previously where he needed to get somewhere nearer the straight. Oh, he's got to find a really good shot to recover this. In fact, he's not going to. Use that cue ball to stay up. It does. And he's in a bit of bother here, Jimmy Croxton, because as uh, Teddy White <laughs> looks on, what? the issue he's got is John Groshaki is going to put him in a load of bother here. A little bit surprised there from John Joe. He doesn't just drop that in and then use the one second closest to the top right-hand corner and play the breakout top left straight away. This ball at the bottom of the table, whilst it is a bad ball, isn't as bad as the, the one, obviously, that's tied up with the red. So he could have solved that problem first, then come down off one of the other balls. Yeah, played that as a shot to nothing because he knew it was very difficult for Jimmy to do anything from here. Or can he? He's just going to put him back in a similar spot and this time round. Oh, hang on a minute. I was about to say he's going to be in a much worse spot because there won't be a pot on. He's left a three-ball plant. He's left the frame up here. It wasn't the end of the world that Jimmy moved that red, but he couldn't allow John Joe to have sight of the yellow to play that shot right there. The issue Jimmy had there was the the loss of turn shot was so easy for for John Joe to move that ball. Could easily have played into it. Ultimately, pots the red off the plant pockets cleared but Jimmy's done his work for him yeah. certainly going to put some pressure on the Croxton Highfield partnership here this should be the frame Sharkey gets his partnership back in it. At about 90 seconds and change to go back to within a frame. Oh yeah. Oh, it's going to be dry though. You can't Can believe, believe that's dry. And all of a sudden Ian Alley and John Joe Sharkey can play to steal. 1 minute and 24 they get out in that time to secure a draw can they even give themselves time on the other end to have their own break and maybe steal a victory 70 seconds one positional shot to play here and this isn't an easy uh, shot right now yeah that was a poor first shot from from me and actually did not get the cue ball right at all just had to get on the, the bottom one of the two together underneath the eight ball not sure he could get it on that shot but he could have got there a couple of shots later and he just got his first positional shot wrong so Ian Ali actually not played the best of matches here considering his normal high level oh, brilliant player absolutely brilliant player who has played some really really elite pool on this table we've seen it Croxton simply needs to just pop that ball, bring Liam to the table, and it's a can't-lose scenario now for Jimmy and Liam, which is a nice position to be in. We're going to wait for the beeps, knock this one home, and the match is over. It's a big win 
for Jimmy and Liam. It must be said, a great start for them. We've seen throughout this last 16 stage in the Pairs Cup that early wins have been crucial. Get off to a good start and you're away. Jimmy so wanting to pop balls. He stays down on the shot, but the match is already done, Jimmy. Ian and John have work to do when they come back, but it's a great start for the Stokies as the Pairs Cup continues after this. Well, there they are, two of the main men. Beautiful shot there of them making their way to the table. Tom Cousins on the break. He's won that battle of who breaks first. Sensible choice. <laughs> well, yeah. that might be the quickest commentator's curse I've ever issued. Might be the worst break I've ever seen Tom Cousins hit. Occasionally he'll go, go in the top corners, very occasionally in the top corners. I, I don't think I've ever seen him go in the middle direct, ever. That, that's quite incredible. Now, bit of a debate here. They're debating holding in the middle or coming down the table behind the eight ball. The last shot was a poor one to leave that sort of angle. And that's yeah, they've actually done a little bit of neither. Yeah. Anywhere near straight there, they just drop it in. It, it, it just anywhere, it was, they got that one all wrong previously to, to leave that angle. Yeah, TJ just got completely caught there between a rock and a hard place. Can Brandon recover the situation? This is a tough old shot. Hell of an effort, but not going to be. Boy, it feels like a big chance missed. It's the first time, actually, in the entire competition they played three matches previous to this, TJ and Brandon. That's the first time where I've ever thought they looked a little bit edgy. Very first ones. They got themselves in trouble a few times when they played earlier on in the competition, but kept digging themselves out with amazing pots, didn't they? They were really good value for coming through. They were absolutely brilliant. But first opportunity getting away early here. These reds still need making, though. A couple on rails, which ordinarily, as say, used to be a little bit of a thing. But now it's slightly more than that, and you've really got to make sure. And look at the way that Tom's played that. He, yeah, sorry, Shane's played that. He's played that in such a way that he's almost thinking, well, I'm going to try and make this, but if I don't, don't give him a shot. Previously, I don't think that would have even entered his mind. Yeah, you just back yourself to make it in. You drop it in and give it every chance, but they've, they've obviously played it in the, the safety way. And it looked like he queued it beautifully as well. How that didn't drop is, is beyond me, actually. needed to get the yellow a little bit further to the right hand side to cause them a problem that yellow still slides in so this should be this should be the frame yeah it's actually you know it feels like a bit of a nothing shot but actually it's worse than that it's a bit of a miss that from TJ he couldn't obviously make that yellow but he had to block that red down the rail block that red down the rail and you've got absolutely a foothold in the frame but all of a sudden nothing left. We heard Tom say there it's a, a massive bag, basically saying that there's a huge pocket. Yellow just makes this fairly comfortable. Thought they might leave it last ball, actually. Slightly surprising they've gone down for it. Made Nothing sure to pocket. buy it off the yellow, yeah. And uh, a few of you might have noticed is the artist formerly known as Tom Cousins. He is significantly smaller than we're used to seeing him. He's had a fabulous sort of personal weight loss journey. Looking fabulous out there tonight, TC. And still not missing a beat on the table either. See there, the slightly funky cue action. TJ Bateman, oh, that's brutal. That's the sort of break that happens after you make a mistake in the previous frame. He caught that break beautifully. You can't really do it too much more. And I mean, how many times do you want to get kicked before it goes in off? But yeah, pretty unique way of queuing for TJ. You would never ever teach that. But it really works for him. Just shows here as well. No surprise, even in a partnership where there are two top players out there. They're still going the right way around. 
You always want to put your stronger player, player two, when you sit on the right-hand side of the arena. So it means that Shane plays this one, and then Tom plays the next three frames, including the middle scotch frame. Good chance here for, for Shane to make it 2-0 as well. It's actually great to see Shane playing so well in the last, well, the last time we saw these two on the show. It was only a few weeks ago now. They were the last qualifiers through into the last 16 here in the Pairs Cup. As Shane alluded to in his interview before this match, it makes a difference just practicing at this form of the game. He's been a jet setter. Really played a lot of different tournaments around the world this year, which I think has been an incredible experience from him in his own way would have learned an awful lot about his game and himself and all the rest of it but can't add so much without taking away from one element and his ultimate precision on the English 8 ball table has suffered I think it's fair to say but getting some practice in before the he showed up with Tom in the pairs it was evident that his touch was there and he's still a world class operator the problem he has is he, he has a game that is built on, on touch and feel and you know, I agree with you completely that when you then start chopping and changing games it becomes incredibly difficult, that's a fab fabulous shot. You, know, you don't have to be off by much on, on the ultimate pulse pro circuit to... Oh, the margins are yeah, tiny. So you just... You know, he, w he won't feel like he's that far off but it was far enough off to be losing a lot of matches, he's having a very down season. very precise finish up until that moment there just lost the cue ball three four shots ago and he was struggling to get it back in prime position and we saw for the first season of ultimate pool he felt like he was never out of position oh, on a string can you recover the situation big kick shot coming up that seems to go pretty close he was close Shane's fallen so far down the rankings that there's a chance come the end of the season that he'll be outside the top 32 which is quite staggering considering where he was at the beginning of ultimate pool that's a good shot from tj bateman a confidence builder played that with a degree of safety in mind knew he was likely to hide the yellow at the bottom of the table but still queuing one in along the rail like that we'll just give him a little pep in his step so the second frame in a row TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton have an excellent chance to win the frame so Brandon just pops on his shoulder for a guardian angel sort of vibe I think the red to the right of the eight ball passes the yellow. Which helps, but that's not the best of positional shots. Depends how he was going about it. He might have always played on the double here. It's, it's almost like a safety double here. You, could, you shouldn't leave the yellow on, but you might not get good position. So much so he's not played it. Don't mind it. Pretty difficult to pop this yellow. coming into it you, he's almost need, going to need to Zorro this across the table one of the things that Shane has been doing a lot of is playing different tables equipment and all the rest of it across his various different sports and you can see there he's, he's using some systems that he might not have necessarily utilised before can he go close with this he's to risk missing it to try and make it solid hit but it's should at least cost him the frame yeah that should be that I actually didn't mind the shot from TJ to be honest with you I think for TJ and Brandon tonight it's it seems really silly but they've just got to play their own game they can't be wrapped up you know oh I'm playing Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson so I've got to play as good as Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson no you've just got to clear the table and however you do it is, is up to you really You've just got to take your chances. That, that's it. That, forget about on who's on the other side of the table. A lot easier said than done, I can tell you that first-hand experience. But <laughs> Absolutely. It, but that that last all. shot was a good example of it. Just didn't fancy getting out, so he plays a containing shot, which is a percentage shot, 
sort of humbled himself a little bit, no ego in that shot, and just said, well, OK, we're here to win the frame, not for me to clear in one visit. Surprised at his choice here, but he's played an excellent shot. He only goes right centre there, he's got to bring the cue ball back about an inch, and then he's got the perfect angle just to stun behind the eight ball, but he was, for whatever reason, didn't like it, so he's come back. He still worked to finish where he's straight in on an eight ball to the corner, so not really a problem. It's four on one. Big moment in the match. Pumps it in. You notice there are a few, quite a few of those shots there. Side TJ, I think, feels much more comfortable to queuing through the ball. Oh, that eight ball was moving. Was it ever? And it is dry, so Cousins and Thompson can run down the clock. And it's the worst possible result. Yeah, they can slowly go about this, but if they had more time on the clock, this is not the trickiest of chances for them. Yellows look fairly comfy and then get out after their first shot. But they're not going to even worry about the clearance. They just have to pop three or four balls and they've won the won the match. Well, they immediately called their extension, which is sensible. It burns immediately 25 seconds before they're even down on this very simple shot. That was unmissable for Shane Thompson. Yeah, everything you have to do is just make sure he missed the reds as well. Just put a bit of side on and all good. This really would be fairly routine for them going to get very far in the finish though. No, into the final 30 seconds and this game is done. And so far, you'd say it's just about gone with the form book. Just about. TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton are not done just yet. They'll be in action next against Ian Alley and John Joe Sharkey and they are going to need to be at their best in that one. A good performance from those boys, but it's going to take more than that to topple Top Cat and the safe cracker. We march on in the Pairs Cup. Those two haven't moved. They've just been on the table, just been beaten by Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson. And I think for these two, Sai, so you've, you've just got to say, stick with the process. They played well, they played better towards the end as well against Shane and Tom, so it's a case of keeping that momentum going. But for Ian and John Joe, I would lightly suggest a bit of a marked improvement is needed after their first match. Yeah, I would. But I'd also say from, from John Joe and Ian's perspective, they should feel positive. You know, we talk about this most weeks, but, you know, for them to come through, they now need to win their last two games and, and hope that other results go their way. But the result they would need to go their way would be Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson beating Jimmy and Liam. So, you know, if you're putting your faith in in the number one player in the game, in the former number one, then, then it's not a bad place to be, but they have to do their bit by winning this match first. Cool, that John Joe Sharkey break is something good, isn't it? He is a, he's a really good cure, to John Joe gets through the ball How really well. How on earth is that dry? He cues this so well. I don't know how he, he cues it like that and, and actually can still keep it straight, to be honest with you. If I tried that, I'd chip the cue ball off the table, I think. <laughs> So first chance, go to TJ and Brandon. And it's a really good chance. And in, in, in the last match, they had a really good chance in the opening frame and didn't take it. This time, you felt they really got to because there's nothing in the way here. This is just about connecting the dots and doing the right thing. You can almost you could back this three or four different ways as well in terms of you get slightly wrong with position, you can cover. Only thing for me there, just a little bit firmer. You don't want to be playing the one to right centre and moving the yellow. And if you have to punch it in, you just lose the cue ball a touch. I mean, you shouldn't, but you can. Yeah, that's a bad mistake. It really is. I mean, they can still recover and take it to the top corner, but the previous shot, they just had to come up the table higher just to make that a simple kind of just control shot to go past it. goes to the top right it's not the end of the world but it's you're gonna have to play it next and they have to factor that in might even be able to screw back into it and get if they get the yellow here they'll be fine yeah that's a good shot yeah it's staying up is a touch as well yeah got away with one there really always nice isn't it when the pre-shot analysis really kicks in and into the actual action and you can look like Nostradamus. <laughs> Get out like once, once a season, but we're good. <laughs> He's 
because most of the time I'm, I'm sat here watching it and I'm kind of I'm looking for problems and you know which is probably what I should be doing in the position I'm in now. The problem is I used to do it when I used to play as well. And that's not what you want to do as a player. You want to be looking for the solutions. Oh, you had plenty of problems when you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is just what TJ and Brandon needed. It really is. He started the night badly against Shane and Tom. And they didn't quite recover in time. Completely <laughs> lost the keyboard on that break. It's still spinning now. Came yeah. right across it. Got away with it. He is going for the. Oh, he's going for the front ball. I was going to say he, that's how far he, he he missed it by. I was thinking he's gone for the cut break there, but he's he's hit the front ball. He's trying to hit that square on. And it's that's uh, yeah got that one all wrong, but the reward is isn't too bad. Which is really liking, and he's usually such a consistent breaker. He's got a major problem here. This ball at the bottom of the table, really tough to work out. Oh, that might be the situation. The issue is he's got it out. What's your next play? Yeah, to get that out and be on anything was so tough. There's too many yellows around it. You too much pace to go into it. That just didn't. That was just massively odds against. He could maybe make the case a little unlucky not to have sight of the Reds up to the top of the table. But it was always the risk. Can he manufacture anything from here? It was a double plant. It was all he had on. Right then, Brandon. Chance. Good chance as well. Really good chance. Just mind your work, really connections like left centre, one on the right hand side, one at the top of the table, three at the bottom are fine. I'd be tempted to play right centre after this one, would be my thinking. He's decided against it, but I can see the argument for it. I was thinking if he could have just stunned up a fraction, go right centre, then the one below the eight ball. This one here gets you on the one by the left centre and use the other one in the open to get on the eight ball, but he's now going to have to use the one Furthest up the table to get on the one to the right hand side of the Reds to get onto the eight ball, which actually isn't too much of a problem. I think he can drop this in dead weight and you just leave three quarter ball to stun across to get perfect. Don't think you need to try and do too much here. He's, he's undecided. He's gone too far. Oh, he's gone past it, so that's fine. Past my suggestion, but he's gone past it to use the cushion. I feel like there's a lot of moving parts at the minute for Brandon. I sort of agree, but this has been a, an actual flawless visit to the table. He, he's gone slightly against the way I was seeing it, but it, in, he's gone perfectly the way he saw it. He's never been anywhere but perfect position. Two-one. Brilliant. Clutch finish from Brandon Flinton. Needing something quick to happen. He threw his whole arm at that one and absolutely nothing happens. Twenty-two, two frames in front. Yeah, I think you can slowly go through these yellows. They're, they're, they're legitimately on for a clearance. You just make sure you do it on the beeps. Right centre gets you on the only one that looks tricky. Oh, don't miss the first shot though. Don't miss that oh. first shot. And it was a foul anyway because the wrong person was playing. Oh, that's an even bigger error. Because cue ball in hand, then means Ian can actually fly through this. This is not done yet. We've got John Joe up next, and he has the. No, Ian broke this one, didn't he? So.
it's quite easy to lose your place out there sometimes. Whose uh, who's frame it is. You kind of, you shouldn't do, it sounds silly, but we have seen it a few times. Touch short. He's got to play the cue ball here. He's played well. Ian Alley needed to show up at, at some point tonight. And for whatever reason, it's not been his night so far. He makes a ball here, though. It's all forgotten. And it should win the frame from it. Or win the match from it, I should say. Oh, not the cue ball, though. Oh, no. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. John Joe Sharkey, you've got 50 seconds. And you want to leave one because you get the next break. You want to have a chance for the Golden to win it. Just let the first shot go wrong. He's got to bend this. Oh dear. They had an opportunity in there in the first match as well to steal, steal points away. They had the opportunity there to steal points away. Those buzzer beaters just are not easy. It's why they are so special when they come around. You've got to almost treat the first two, three shots fairly normally. Obviously, you've got to do it pretty quick, but you've still got to play the right shot for the first two, three. That is amazing how quickly you can catch up at the back end of finishes. You know, 50 seconds, even at, you know, should get there, but it's going to cost him. It's going to cost him. TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton knock out another star duo. Their run continues in the Pairs Cup despite a couple of frights. And a big heavyweight contest coming up next too as the Pairs Cup rumbles on. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup ahead of a crucial matchup. If the last game was something of a survivor series, this is a true Royal Rumble. Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson taking on Jimmy Croxton and Liam Ifield. <coughs> Both teams won their opening matches. Winner of this game takes control of the group and puts one foot in the final four. That is the worst break Liam Highfield maybe has ever hit. So I don't think he's hit many. And from the small sample size that I've seen of him, he doesn't really do that that often. And he knows. You can see he's swinging a leg and everything. He's left a slightly tricky situation though. Two problems to solve. Top right and nearest the right centre. So it looks like they're taking reds here, so you can play the red in, that's no problem. So I was thinking it's more of a problem with your yellows. Then they can play a three ball plant potentially to solve the other ones. So it's quite clever, really. They don't actually need to do too much. It looks worse than it is. So much so they come down the table at the bottom first and then they'll do it. mistake from Shane Thompson again we will keep laboring this point but there are no gimmies anymore you've got to be accurate into those corner pockets game has been changed in that respect it's not easy though is it you come to the table you're excited because your opponents just missed and you get left this Little lost turn on here though, which I think Jimmy spotted. Yellow off the side rail, cue ball into the red, high behind the eight ball. Needs to pop the red. Needs to hide the cue ball a bit more. What a thick contact there on that red. He's left on the three ball plan. Yeah, it's a not cruel easy. twist of fate for Jimmy Croxton. It's not easy here, but you feel like he's going to have to play it. Quick look to see if it went top left. I just wonder if maybe they weren't thinking three ball plant, they were thinking red off cushion off red to open up the top right hand corner. Let's see what he plays. Yeah, interesting. It's not a terminal mistake for Jimmy. Well, I think they've got to try and go. Don't see the safety here. Don't see the value. Yeah, the, 
there has to be that change. It was safety last time, 10 seconds as Jimmy calls. So it did require the, almost the attitude adjustment there from defense into attack. And that's worked, that's come out okay. One on the right-hand side, where are they going with it? Does it slide past the red, or do they need to come down the table or, or get right behind it and drop it in? This is a high-tariff finish. Liam Highfield is doing the pool equivalent of kicking every ball out there, isn't he? <laughs> He's leaning 45 degrees to try and get rubs and rolls. That's actually worked out well for them. If, if he can screw back and avoiding the other yellow, they can deal with the one on the right-hand side, leave the other one up the table, then to connect to the other side of the table. So. I think he's got the angle he has. Yeah, business here. I think he has to go centre pocket or down the table here. Uh, he's going to go for the one at the top. I thought he was going to try and get right behind that yellow and drop it in the right centre, and, and that would have really helped them. I suppose with the angle he's got, he can play into the yellow. There's backing your mate, and then there's backing your mate. This is, this is, I mean, as hard as it gets. A hampered queuing. It's got the, the center of them. It's still hampered. Oh, how good a shot is that? Woof. And that's why I was saying I thought they might try that previously, because now you'd have, you could have stunned that, and you have the one at the top to then get on this one down the table. You could have just straightened it up with top spitting in a little bit aside and come right down the middle of the table. Now this is super high tariff for, for Jimmy. Oh, the double was not far. And back to the table. Come the brother to, brothers of destruction, Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson. There's a three ball plan. Just how good a shot was that, by the way, from Liam Highfield to make that ball? He obviously didn't have anything he could do with the cue ball, but yeah. that pot was exquisite. The question is for me, how... I suppose you've got to... Be, I'm just thinking out loud here, but... Oh! Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in your chair, Jimmy. Just <laughs> Tom Cousins has just got away with one there. I think we all thought that had missed. Just going back to my previous point, though, sort of thinking out loud, would it be as tough as it was for Jimmy if he floats it down the cushion, dead weight, misses it, and keeps the pocket? Does he put them under more pressure? I suppose you've got to do what, the best way of making the ball. There's no value in taking the pocket. Jimmy Thompson rolls in the eight ball. Still, still got that sort of old school mentality in me. Still always feel like it's a bit of a risk to leave an eight ball as a double. But there really wasn't any other option for Tom Cousins in this frame. Which mentally makes it a little bit easier. Just he, he knew it before his first shot, he knew what he was doing on the eight ball. I think I feel slumped a little in his, in his chair. It's uh, tough to be on the receiving end of the Tom Cousins shellacking. That is a brilliant finish. Oh, there's the break. That's what he's been looking for. First time tonight, he's really properly found it. That was a heavyweight hit. A slightly more lightweight Tom Cousins. for a second there. And uh, Jimmy's letting him know about it. I'm not sure they ever wanted to be on the plant, second shot. I, I, obviously, difficult to know. I suppose they I suppose they do. I mean, eight ball goes bottom left, so clear these two, get on the one at the top of the table, and then you're, you're away. So, yeah, this is, this is probably what they were always playing for. Well... You don't expect that.
question is what they've left. The yellow next to the eight ball, I think, goes to the left centre from where they are now. That might be all they've got. I think they have to try and go, obviously, with the time remaining and 3 0 down. They've just got to play short position. One really good positional shot wins them the frame to get left hand side of the, the three in the bottom half, but I feel like they've missed a trick there. I'm going to say it's a more comfortable shot, but where are you now? Really need to get on this one at the top of the table. Yeah. Just let Liam say it. Can you screw into the red? So catch the red <laughs> half ball. Get the cue ball up somewhere near the break line. Would be ideal here. No. The answer to screw <laughs> <off> it. <laughs> Jimmy's giving him his answer. Yeah, no, he can't screw on off that red. Yeah. Needed a little bit more. Need a little bit more off that because you had just to, to screw off it. Oh. Oh. Well, how that isn't a loss of turn, I'll never know, but <laughs> it's, uh, it should be loss of frame ultimately for Tom and Shane here. They can come to the table, 3 0 up, four minutes left. Take their time. It does make the eight ball and the, the second red from the bottom there slightly tricky, so I'm not surprised to see them pull back. We've got the numbers advantage as well. Doesn't want to make that. Won't. Yeah. Nearly a big fluke from Jimmy Croxton. <coughs> All it's done is make the the finish a lot easier for Tom and Shane. Decided not to try and get the cue ball out. They couldn't really play the plant there. If he tries to get the cue ball out, he flicks the other red and makes a bit of a mess of it. So back in the queuing here. Oh, dear. Oh, he's not fluked yet, has he? He thought about it. Maybe not all over yet. Two minutes and 55 seconds would indicate it just about is, but they can keep on batting here. In Croxton and Highfields. Maybe, just maybe. Don't worry about it, says Liam Highfield. I'll knock him in. Two minutes and 20 seconds to play in this tournament. Almost needs to be a golden break here. Yeah, you feel like it pretty much has to be, really. Two minutes, 20. Asking a lot for two full frames. Cracking break for Jimmy, you've got to say. Well, get your skates on then, Jimmy. You need to make it about a one minute clearance here to at least put the pressure on. Take his time on the first shot or two here, but I think once he gets to the back end, he should be fairly good. I'm really, really surprised. I think reds are a huge amount easier. Well, the yellow to the closest yeah. to the bottom right corner pocket is a horrible, horrible ball. Oh, I'm shocked that he's gone yellows. I really am. Yeah, that's not the greatest <laughs> shot he's ever played. So one minute and 45 just to see it out, really, for Tom Cousins. I love the fact that Jimmy's held up his hand there to apologise. I can assure you Tom is over the moon. That you <laughs> <laughs> you've not cleared up there. And no apologies <laughs> necessary, you sir. Need, you don't need to apologise for missing. <laughs> I know he's put a red safe, but that's, you know, there's one minute 20 left here. Tom's just got pot four balls. And he's, he's not panicking. He's not worried. Though is almost the worst shot he could have played. Has he still got room to that red to the bottom left? It's tight. It's Tom Cousins, of course he has. I had to bend it. I had to bend it a little bit. No problems though. Fifty seconds left. Lands 
just about where that yellow is above the two reds off this shot this game is over there you go Shane Thompson and Tom Cousins continue this ominous march towards the final four. Jimmy Croxton and Liam Highfield still not out of it just yet. But winning their final match will keep them just about alive and invested. But Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson need only a point in their final... <laughs> oh, go on, Tom. No. He's not even going to play it. <laughs> in their final match of the night. They're in the box seat. I feel in Croxton are right up against it. Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson, though, continue to rumble towards the final four. All comes down to this. Liam Highfield and Jimmy Croxton. TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton still just about in the night. That's the Liam Highfield break he was looking for. That wasn't there in the last match. It's a hell of a break when it's going. There's a lot of permanent pool players who would give a, an awful lot to have that sort of break on tap. That was his best of the night, I think. Got a little bit less into that, as in a little bit higher up the cue ball. And it just... I know, it just helps with the power for me, that, is, that was excellent. Squared up, flushed, brilliant. Yeah, the reward though, isn't as good as it should have been, or deserved to be. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, it's not gonna drop. I suppose he wasn't playing it anyway. When he got down on it, when it's Jimmy Croxton, you just never know. Yeah, but he, he's played the safety there. He's got it very, uh, very well controlled. Is that a big pocket in the right middle, though? It might be. He would have been in a world of hurt. That yellow would drop, though. float in the, in the other way. Yeah, no worries. Excellent shot. Great chance here on reds. Got to play one really good positional shot. Land on the red on the left-hand side, which should be your last ball for the eight ball. Oh, it just needed to drop. Yeah, I was getting too far away, too carried away there. That was a really good opportunity once he made that ball in the left centre. I know that, that was a trickier plant than it maybe looks on camera, but yeah, that was a great chance to win frame. Another good example about even shots like that which appear relatively straightforward. They've gone from relatively straightforward to missable in the introduction of the new rats on Apollo table. That's made things more awkward. Mm. A little bit unfortunate for them. They're still gonna they were always gonna have the yellow at the top of the table to deal with. But now they've made the one in the middle of the table with the, the eight ball a problem. Easy to deal with one at the top. Well, that could open up the, uh, the eight ball here. The question is, is that it might be opening it up for TJ and Brandon rather than themselves here. see whether he could play the double plant into the right centre. There. Probably just about on, but is it the right shot? Jimmy thinks not. <laughs> well, they're having some fun out there. Said they were going to, and they absolutely are. I think they've missed a the trick for me. And 
and then our massive second favourite for the frame. Now, initially it felt unlucky for them to knock the, the yellow onto the eight ball first shot, but actually in hindsight, that was going to be a real problem for TJ and Brandon to, to deal with. So when they had that problem at the top of the table, uh, and I know I'm saying this with hindsight, but play safe, try and get that, maybe play the, the double plant right centre if you want to go aggressive knowing full well that you're not leaving an easy finish back. You know, it would have been really difficult for them to open up that eight ball. And then they've just handed a really easy chance here. joke around a lot with, with Jimmy Croxon. Obviously, he spends quite a bit of time on commentary with us as well. But he never likes to play safe. But it's not really true. I mean, he does play you know, plenty of safety, but Ooh. this is a poor one. I'll come back to my point in a minute once this eight ball's either gone in or not. I can't believe how much that cue ball's died on him there. Looked to get loads more action on that. Certainly played it hard enough to. I just think he was a bit low on the cue ball. So he's left TJ. A bit of a stinker. Oh, cue ball. No. Oh, would you believe it? Jimmy Croxton and Liam Highfield go 1 0 up. Like a piston. So straight. And how do you like that? How do you like that? We see it every week. Somebody hits a break that perfect and gets kicked in off. It, it, it just. The pool player in me just. Oh, I want to cry every time I see it. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tough. Well, reds look okay. There is one very obvious problem, Red. And he, he wanted to break it out next, but the, he's not on the uh, red to left centre to play the breakout. Instantly pulls back. Again, like that choice from TJ. No, sort of the opposite, really, to to Jimmy's instincts that we were talking about in the last frame. He's never afraid to pull back if he needs to. Wasn't going to go hunting there. Four minutes left, 1-1. One, one. Crucial frame. Has he left, Liam, and natural? Tough pot, but this one to right centre. Bottom cushion into his problem. He did actually have that natural angle, but chose not to, to play it. I suppose if he plays it with more pace, it throws wider, and he, he catches the yellow on the way down, which may well have opened everything up anyway. Well, that's not a good shot from Liam. Oh, he's not left the long plan, has he? He has. That's a really poor shot, if so, because everything just came out. It's just come out a dream for TJ here, if so. Oh, it couldn't have come out any better. He'd have loved that one to stay over the pocket, mind. Is he on it? I think I'm not sure he is. I'm he's not really unlucky if he's not. No, he is. We think. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Had to really get that cue ball out. Once he was on it, there was no reason not to, you know, he could really spin that one out. Some drama here. Cross double. Oh, it is. All out here. He's not left it easy. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get mixy, isn't it? Final three minutes of this one. But with only two and a bit minutes left to play, we should throw out the fact that the draw sees Tom and Shane through as well. Yeah, absolutely we should. <laughs> These two continue to hack away at this frame. One of them will make it fall eventually. Oh, that's a shot. That should. I, suppose, I, I say should, but he's got to nip this one in his nearest two now. He can take one of the other ones, but you've got to get back across. Maybe he was a touch closer to it than I first thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it was on, which does make it more difficult. Yeah, a lot more difficult. Has he got a slightly too much angle here? This is awkward. This is really, really awkward. I don't see how we can have yeah, he stunned that side of the eight ball. Best case, maybe a very thin clip or a double. Double. So pretty well to find that gap. This is a big shot, though. 
90 seconds remain. And it is a wide. It's hold yourself together time for TJ Bateman. When you see him give a ball like that, you you can't help but wonder how on earth does he ever make one? It works for him. He's a very clean potter of the ball. He really is. 45 seconds left. He's going to use plenty of this one. Could be served with making the cue ball run a few extra seconds as well, but he's happy to take the frame and run. 40 seconds remaining. Liam Highfield and Jimmy Croxton trail. Let's not be too critical. Makes the ball here. It is match over. Definitely took some off that break. Oh, look at these yellows. Is he on one? 30 seconds. I don't think Liam realises he's playing this frame. Well, he's not. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, and he, <laughs> <laughs> and he was correct there, Sai. Si. <laughs> I mean, he was just sat there casual as you like. 30 seconds to make a, a reverse clearance. Here's the Scotch frame. Maybe he knew something we didn't. <laughs> TJ Bateman will end the match right there, and they are still in it. TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton go to the bitter end. They are victorious, and they just need a little bit of help for Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson. They're almost there, and they're in action next. Well, for Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson, Christmas almost came early in that last game, but the draw didn't quite arrive and they do have to go and win out. So Tom Cousins comes to the table to break off in our final match of the night. Ian Alley and John Joe Sharkey already eliminated, but maybe can do some friends a favor. Well, there's the power. Yeah. Uh, not quite under complete control with the cue ball, but the power is just massive. And a really good layout as well. This is yeah, the perfect layout for this sort of situation where you just want to settle yourself down and get the first frame on the board. And obviously, the draw is good enough for them. And it makes a world of difference. There's, there's a real, really isn't much in the way here that can go wrong. Not quite a natural. Shane's just going to have to force this one. Got all the room in the world to do just that. Yeah, that's pretty comfy, isn't it? match where you need to win to make sure that is the perfect start instant bad news for TJ Bateman and Brandon Flinton who we must say once again underdogs Carl Sutton and Sean Chimmerfield awaiting the winner of this group which at the moment is going to be Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson and well Carl is Shane's world doubles winning partner Sean Chipperfield and Tom Cousins are also very familiar friends in, and indeed foes. Tom's break just hasn't quite worked tonight. It's, it's been less consistent than normal. And just something for him to keep an eye on. It's a, a huge power split, but it comes up dry. But the thing that will bother him the most there is the cue ball. Yeah, nearly in the 
opposite centre to the one at the beginning of the night. It's a big surprise. A huge matchup if it is to be for next week. That really will. Jojo has been strong tonight. table now. Has to get past the straight here though. Well, get to the straight. Straight's fine. Straight's perfect. Not sure if he can get how easy it is to get there actually. Oh, this is a little bit straighter on this one than I thought. Shouldn't be a problem. Just got there. Very tidy finishes from John Joe Sharkey, it must be said. Very, very good indeed. D the dish fest that's never materialised once this evening is sort of baring its teeth in the final match. Three frames in seven minutes, it's a tall order. Yeah, it feels unlikely, doesn't it? It does now. Queuing up to fall into that top right corner pocket. And look at this split. You can actually just see Brandon's face over Tom Cousins' shoulder. That was the wryest of wry smiles. He knows him and TJ's race is run. That is some break, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. One of those where I think it's probably harder for Tom Cousins to miss these. Yeah, exhibition. He might have gone for the combo first shot just to have a bit of fun with it. Enjoy himself out there, but runs always the right way. And yeah, with you, how do you go wrong? the only shot that had any jeopardy in it whatsoever. Executed to perfection. And Tom Cousins and Shane Thompson are heading to the final four of the Ultimate Pool Pairs Cup. Job done. John Joe Sharkey and Ian Alley bid us farewell for this year's competition. But these two are gonna take some stopping on finals night. When we come back, we'll hear from the two of them as they get set for a tilt at the title. <laughs>